So, we've seen that the only feasible way to have a flying car is to get it to fly by pushing air downwards. And we've seen that's a bit problematic. The basic problem is that air is not very dense. So to push enough of it downwards to keep yourself in the air, you either have to push it very fast, in which case you're very inefficient and burning huge amounts of energy, or you need to push an immense amount of air, such that your fan on each corner of your car is not going to cut the mustard. That being said, how can we go forward? Well, the ideal form of flying car would be a person with a jetpack. That's pushing a small amount of stuff down at a very high speed. So that's going to be ridiculously inefficient, which is why we don't have personal jetpacks in the world today. A better way, how about instead of having four fans on each corner of the car, or only one square meter, would be to have one very big fan on the top of the car. And this is indeed a feasible way to have a flying car, but they are called helicopters. Instead of having the four fans on each corner, you have the one big fan on the top that's therefore blowing more air down, allowing you to blow it at a lower speed, and therefore allows you to fly around. And these are perfectly feasible, they exist all around the place, but it turns out that even for the biggest feasible rotor sizes, the energy efficiency is still substantially worse than cars. So these things are so expensive that most people can't use them. They're used by billionaires in the military, but not by everyday people. Why can't we make rotors bigger? I'm actually not sure about that. In principle, if you make the rotor really big, you could get down to the efficiency of a normal car. That's once again giving you something that won't fit in your driveway uh, and will need very large space to take off. I imagine the stresses in the blades get too bad or it's starting to be very inefficient at pushing the air. In most rotor blades, it's the outer parts of the blades that do most of the work because they're the ones that are moving faster. So it's an interesting project to try and investigate what it is that stops you having bigger rotor blades and hence more efficient helicopters. But at the moment, the most practical way to push even more air down at an even lower speed and hence be very efficient is an aeroplane with wings. If you imagine an aeroplane flying at some velocity v, this blue volume here is telling you the amount of air that in a given time t is going to come close to one of the wings and can therefore be deflected downwards. Not quite sure how thick it is, maybe 20% of the wing length or something like that. See the written notes for full details. Uh, but this method is extremely efficient. You're moving a very large volume of air down at a relatively low speed, and therefore transport in planes is actually more efficient than ground cars. The cost per person per kilometre on a Boeing 747 or an Airbus A380 is actually much less than the cost to transport a person a kilometre on any form of ground transport apart from a bicycle. So it's actually a very good form of transport. The only trouble is that to get enough air to take off, this thing has to be going pretty fast to sweep out this volume here, so it needs runways to take off. So again, it's not very feasible for jumping in your driveway, taking off and then landing at your office. So, small amount of matter, high speed, doesn't happen. Medium amount of matter, medium speed, does happen, but very expensive. Large amount of mass pushed down, low speed, highly efficient, but it needs big runways to take off. So it looks like there are some fundamental reasons why we don't have flying cars. But we're not far off. We're not far off. The helicopter is pretty close. How can we make things better? Well, there are lots of possibilities in here. Maybe you just you only need to use the rotors or to take off. Once you're up in the air, you could then speed up and use wings. So in principle, you could develop something like the tilt rotor systems, uh, which turn from helicopter into plane, only use the very energy burning rotors at the ground. And indeed, these things do exist. The trouble is you're paying the price of having to have the rotors that rotate and everything like that. So the mechanical complexity. Similarly, you could have wings that fold out. So once again, you could take off the little fans at the corner, burning fuel incredibly, and then have deployable wings. The trouble is, that's once again a lot of weight. The wings have to be strong enough to support you, and they have to fold up, and that's going to cost a lot, and weigh a lot. But maybe somebody can actually put together a feasible, practical, drivable combination of all these things. But it's going to be a formidable challenge.